Hello, friends, and welcome back immediately to the OCL. We have a draft between OE Infinity. Happy to be here. Underway, Blue Squad this time is going to be happy to be here. This is the side I was hoping they were going to get in game number two, but now this is when the rotation happens. And honestly, given the fact that their draft was dicey, if they still came out on top in that second match, alls, they have a lot of momentum. I think that they can make a statement versus Infinity in this round. Yeah, this would be a great way for them to start bringing the momentum back. They brought it back to 1-1. If they can take the lead here and really start pushing forward, this changes the game. I mean, game one was such a stomp. It didn't even look like these two teams should have been in the same bracket, let alone in the same game. Uh, so this is a complete turnaround, and if they can keep that momentum going, it'll look really good. I do expect some draft changes from OE Infinity. Perhaps we're going to see that Kane finally taken away from Mr. Ken. But outside of that, I'm not quite sure what OEI is going to pull out of the bag here. They've got plenty of choices to change and much that needs to improve. At the same time, they clearly have a read on what they want to ban out of the meta. And so therefore, they're covering their bases on that front first, rather than going for any of the specializations that Happy to Be Here have been piloting. So that's Aurelian Soul and Zeri knocked away yet again. Now, Happy to Be Here, they're banning out Zillion, they're banning out Wukong and that Pantheon. So this is the same look as game number two. It paid off there. Maybe it'll pay off again. Yeah, absolutely. It looked great in game two. I think we can see it again in game three. And if it looks good, perfect. If it doesn't look good, then uh, so be it. They will have a fourth game to play. And Pride Soccer NA will be denied the Rengar this time. This is a good adjustment. I think Optimal Esports Infinity basically won the first game off the back of Pride Soccer NA, either lagging or just being really bad at Aatrox. Either way, it was definitely a top gap, and Pata was able to just take their gold lead elsewhere and also get Tim fed in the process, right? So now with game number two, Pride Soccer NA looking so much stronger on the Rengar, it makes sense that they adjust by now, knocking that down a peg, getting Pride Soccer NA onto something else. But happy to be here. Gonna grab that Vagar, you know. It's facing nerfs in the future, and that's a good sign that right now it's the time to pick it. Yeah, Vigar, always a fun champ, means that you can play for the ultra late game and never fear. Uh, that being said, has received repeated nerfs to his early game, so it is possible that if OEI picks something super early game, wants to be very aggressive, wants to push forward in the first six, eight levels, they could take a serious advantage in the mid lane here. The thing is, Alls, I, for as much as I do love this Vagar, I do think that going so early on with this pick is a bit difficult uh, for Happy to be here to then shore up the rest of their draft because now OE Infinity, they're going to get the wham bam combo that Zaya Rakan most likely. Um, I think that Robin underperformed on the Zaya, but perhaps that was just kind of getting back into how to play it versus what they were doing in game number one on the um, Sivir. Okay. But no, in fact, that's a pivot I was not seeing at all. Uh, Seraphine coming in, maybe Fair an enough. open flex into the Vagar. Very interesting call for sure. I mean, yeah, that could technically go into the mid lane, but come level six, level seven, level eight, that Seraphine just disappears off the face of the earth if he lands a baby cage in a primordial burst. So I'm not sure that I necessarily see that ever going into Izzo's hands here. And now that Ash is coming out, also has flex potential there for the bot lane of Happy to Be Here. This actually could be Vagar Ash bot if they really wanted to be spicy with it. I think that they're keeping their options open really nicely. No, don't close them immediately with the gen. Come on, guys. All right, well, it is Ash support gen. ADC with the Vagar mid. So, you know, all of my speculation already goes out the window, and now I have nothing to talk about for this draft phase. Well, we can talk about the double ADC bot lane, which uh, has fallen a little bit out of favor. It's a bit surprising to see it resurrected here by Happy to Be Here. Jin Ash of all lanes as well. You know, mm. you see the Jin, and you half think, hey, maybe this is a carrier angle. Maybe it's going to be the Ash ADC. And then you remember that Ash is just to support at this point doesn't is never allowed to play adc and you, you feel a little sad this is the thing all i actually don't really think that ash Jin is a lane that is like similar to other ad carry support style lanes right where you have a marksman support um 
for me, Ash is just straight up a support, right? They build Imperial Mandate. That's not something you see on, like, Caitlyn or Callista support. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they truly are just looking to spam those arrows. And honestly, this is a great call because it's going to force Zaya to pay that cleanse tax. Seraphine now is going to have to posture very defensively in order to not be caught out early because you need to always have that Encore on the table. Luckily, Jarvan, that's going to buy the space that I wanted to see from Tim in the jungle role. And now the Zaya Seraphine maybe look a little bit more safe. Yeah, it might be all right. We do also finally see the cane ban did get that because Happy to Be Here chose to pick up the Vigar instead of the jungler. That might hurt Mystiken. Played two games on the cane so far. We haven't seen anything else out of him. So perhaps this J4 for Tim will be returned to game one form. Will be able to have as much effect as the Wukong did. But OE Infinity, question now becomes, do they counterpick the Vigar here or do they blind pick top? Uh, good question. I really would like to see Happy to be here, at least on their side. Oh, what just happened? Did I not get a pick? Oh, no, never mind. I I'm very, very silly. Uh, there there's uh, yes. the Orn coming through, so it's going to be the counter pick reserve for the mid lane. Maybe even a flex down into the support role, depending on what we see come out. Oh, that echo. Very spicy from the side of okay. Happy to be here. Probably going into the jungle. Uh, the Maokai, though, makes me think that maybe it's something like Vagar Top Echo Mid. Yeah, this could be another unusual pick coming out of Pride Stalker here. I'm not entirely certain. Maokai hasn't been as good in lanes since he was pretty heavily nerfed after, you know, turns out Riot doesn't like champions being able to play four roles at once and being 55 plus percent win rate in all of them. <laughs> uh, that was healthy. And Whoa. Bard is the final choice. Oh my. This what this has a to draft. be support, right? Yeah. I, I'm almost certain that this is support with Seraphine mid, but collectively, what in the world are these two teams thinking, man? Oh <laughs> gosh. You you said it in uh in load into game two. Uh you said something to the effect of alls. I'm worried that you've got at least two games of these wild drafts coming at me and uh yeah, you you called it right on the nose. This is this is what we're looking at for game three here. I I don't even know where to start with the team fights. It's just everywhere. Yeah, I mean the team fights are going to be wild. I'm very excited for them. Hopefully Bard doesn't grief it. You know that that is very often going to happen with tempered fate. But I have faith in Blue Caboose. You know I believe that they is that Bard in their little icon that they have anyway. Um gonna be a very very weird game for sure happy to be here i think that this draft is probably the strongest they've looked though for as odd as it is you have a massive burst potential off of echo mystic hen has been known to play very aggressively i think they're gonna just do that again and honestly echo's a champion where once fed it's basically impossible to kill him especially when you got stuff like a maokai and a vagar defending any dive potential from the side of oe infinity and the dive potential is all centralized only on tim with the jarvan the fourth everybody else is gonna sit back for the most part i guess orn can jump in but it's not like he has kill pressure yeah and if the orn jumps in you lose one of the sources appeal for the zaya Seraphine is a pretty good peeler. Bard, a little bit less consistent here, so I'd like to see the Orn sit back just a bit and play to protect Robin. Of course, the downside to this is this does require Robin to step up and play well. And last game, a couple of those team fights, poor positioning really cost OEI from Robin. So need to see a little bit of improvement there. Um, an update for y'all, we are seeing some technical issues with some microphones for the side of Happy to Be Here, so we will be a little bit delayed getting into game. For sure, but I guess before we move on to a break or anything like that, Alls, you got any closing thoughts looking at these two teams? You know, I said it in game one, I really have no idea, or in game two, I really have no idea what's going to happen here. I, I don't think anyone could possibly predict what's going to happen here, but this is a game with a ton of capacity for surprise. Last game, it had to be happy to be here, stepping up, bringing out the wild cards, making the game theirs to lose. This time, we need to see OEI do the same thing. We need to see them take this bard, take this Seraphine in the mid lane, and go ahead and do something incredible to push this game forward for them if they drop two games in a row if they're on the back foot heading into games four and five it's going to be significantly harder for them 
So we need to see them step up. Otherwise, I think the series is happy to be here. All right. I think that I agree with you, honestly. I know that it feels like I'm a little bit swayed by whatever immediately happened in the prior game, right? <laughs> Where I was like, oh, man, happy to be here. They're running it down in draft. They're going to run it down in the second game as well because OE Infinity overperformed in game number one. And now I feel like the tables have turned. I'm like, OE Infinity, guys, uh, I don't know if the Zaya worked out that super that well for Robin. I know they got like a bird in their name and they have a bird person in game. But I, I just feel like uh, they needed to play something like the Sivir once more, a little bit more supportive of a champion, something that like you really are incentivized to sit super far back on. Actually, Jin could have been an option for them, but you know, um, I love well, casting Seraphine. I love casting Orn. Love casting the Jarvan. I have not casted that much Bard because who the hell picks Bard? But you know, this will be an exciting one for sure. And all, I really am happy to be here with you for this elimination series. It got a whole lot more interesting now that we're at one and one. We're going to throw it to a quick break, but when we return, it's going to be for game number three.
Hello, friends, and welcome back to Skin Critique, because I have a bit of an issue. I just realized with the Seraphine default skin, you know how she does, like, the taunt where she goes and does, like, Dance Dance Revolution? It makes so much more sense if her, like, whole, like, flying pad thing just had a rail on it to begin with. Also, it's, it's so silly that it doesn't have a rail, usually. Like, how the hell is she standing up? She falls over. She's getting concussed, man. Yeah, that is definitely not allowed under OSHA regulations. That would be very, very dangerous for a performer not to be hooked in while on a moving craft like that. There's no way that any theatrical organization would ever allow that to go on stage. So you're definitely correct here. Overall, I just find that design a little bit weird. It's so small, right? Like, you have... Yeah, there! there. Yeah, All of yeah. a sudden, becomes, like, ten times more helpful in the taunt. I, I don't get it. Like, just hold on to that usually, Seraphine. Like, l look at the centripetal force. You'd be <laughs> yeeted off that thing in an instant if people, like, weaved back and forth the way that they did in League in real life. But whatever. You know, we got happy to be here in Optimal Esports Infinity, taken to the rift for game number three. And complaints about character design notwithstanding, this should be an interesting one. Yeah, I'm waiting for the Blue Caboose level 1. Dropped some hints in a Twitch chat that they had something spicy up their sleeves and uh, haven't seen anything so so far. Doesn't look like the uh, Unsealed Spellbook was taken, so we're not seeing any jungle steals. So Blue Caboose has to pull something out here if, or he, we wants will to, uh, <laughs> if he wants to keep that... Uh, game because he says if he dies he's quitting the game all right well level one is upon them they were going to just get the q off versus savant trade a little bit of damage back and forth between them and that w from the ash so you know no death on the horizon unfortunately so we will not be seeing blue caboose quit the game which actually should be fortunately i don't want to see anyone quit league of legends i know that we all meme about this game and how much we hate it but truly it is a labor of love at the end of the day and you know it's been a labor of love getting to, to this point uh, having robin. to be here in optimal esports infinity have taken through the doldrums of the ocl and all of the little administrative problems we have and they are now facing off for what could be the final time for either side, as this is, in fact, elimination round. And Robin not starting this game off super well. That was very awkward on their part, taking a lot of punishment, having to flash out, going low. Is going to try to just heal up out of, under the tower rather than go for the reset. So at least they're going to try to stay in XP range and get a little bit of CS back in their pockets. But happy to be here now. Get a really good cheater recall, and they're going to be in a very, very good spot going forward. The problem is... Pride Soccer top, you know, they are no longer on that Rengar. They don't have the mobility to jump in between bushes. And because that's the case, Pata solo killing this champion at level three on Orn, nonetheless. Yeah, had the early levels push this wave in. That's going to be a lot of CS, a lot of XP lost by Pride Stalker here. On top of not having the flash flashed as the auto attack was going through. Really unfortunate for the Maokai, not going nearly as well as the Rengar did game two. And given uh, how much all... of a power point that was. The Ash doesn't have a support item. That's not a spectral sickle in their inventory. Oh, oh my. That's a that's a choice. That's spice. Yeah, <clears throat> that, that is certainly spice. I don't think that this is ever the correct choice. Like, I've actually said before all that I think double support item is like really overpowered and you should just go for like a support top side. Even here, I think that like you go like Maokai and then you just eventually like level a support item up if you're like really shoved out of lane and can't CS all that much. But that, that's another talk. I've never said once in my life, yeah, go no support items in a game. There's going to be ha a lot of vision play here given that this is a coordinated match. And so therefore, happy to be here. They're going to struggle until they can get that 400 gold on Savan, or maybe this is just their conscious strategy. They're just never getting that support item. Yeah, but here's the thing. You don't get the support item. More importantly, you don't get income. Savan yep. has zero CS. All he has had for gold is passive gold generation. What he yep. gets from standing around. And that's lower when you don't have the support item, because the support item gives plus three GPU 10. So this yep. is really bad for Savan's uh, gold efficiency, it's bad for his finances here, and even if this is an Imperial Mandate Ash, all this is doing is putting that build further and further into the future. Well, Savan has taken a back here. This is the deciding factor. Are they going to go for the support item? They sold their pot, so I think, yeah, this was just a genuine mistake rather than strategy. But Optimal Esports Infinity, they could bring the side of relief. You know, Robin was getting set a little bit behind on that Zaya off of that rough trade they took early. But now they're actually up on CS. They bought a coal. They're going to be able to cash that out, go deeper into this one. And that's pretty valuable for OEI to stay competitive in this. 
Yeah, that does definitely give them some space here. Blue Caboose has had the Relic Shield for a hot minute now. Is going to be a whole lot ahead on Vision and a whole lot ahead on Gold. Certainly, the Bard not necessarily as valuable in terms of a Golden Stats perspective than an Ash. But still, big help for OEI, who is slowly creating advantages across the map here. Yeah, I kind of want to refocus back top because I know we kind of gloss over the fact that Pata got a freaking solo kill on Orn, and he might be going for another one on the Pride Stalker. Uh, this is a really rough situation because Pride Stalker basically solo stabilized game number two and made it so that the rest of the team could pop off and have the space to breathe. Now, if once again this Orn gets super accelerated, we could be at a point in time where he's distributing ornaments really quickly, is just basically unkillable, and now Vortex Ninja on Jin, rather than something that's a bit more high damage oriented like the Varus could really feel the pain because that's the case. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely see that happening. I do want to call attention to something that was called out by Twitch chat first here. Thank you to them. Uh, what is up with this Catalyst of Eons that Pot is picking up? They may actually just be going for Roa Orn to make the most out of their passive. I've actually like talked about this before. I don't think it's terrible. Roa is not an item that you typically want to see on like a full tank, but to be honest, Tim is going to be shouldering a lot of the frontlining burden himself. Pata is going to want to buy space for himself initially during team fights to call down the Forge God. And so that means that they don't have to be the tankiest in the world. Meanwhile, Botsai, we got a big confrontation. Huge still for Mr. Ken going over the wall with that Echo. Take it away, the first dragon. And Yoshi Biter is going to kill Izzo. Robin's also in a lot of trouble. Doesn't take the magical journey. And because that's the case, Echo picks up a kill. Savon going to be caught out on the back end of that one. But happy to to be here bounce back beautifully although pata wants to ensure that oei maintains a kill advantage they get the solo kill topside versus pride stalker and a but that's another one grabbed by mr ken a 2-0 echo at seven minutes that is not at all what you want to see no that's huge couple of big mistakes there from oei on the bot side fight blue caboose and tim on cross purposes there blue caboose flashing forward to try and find a stun onto vortex ninja well Tim was flag and dragging out. Izzo just getting caught early from Yoshi Miner's rotation. Robin couldn't find enough damage. Still level 5. Didn't have the Feather Storm to stay safe. Just a poor fight all around. Really doesn't bode well. Even if the top side is going great right now. Pata 2 and 0. Oh, rushing towards what looks to be now like an Abyssal. Yeah, I'm not really sure if Optimal Esports Infinity say that that is favorable for them. Sure, Pata's even more far ahead, and like I said, that's a dynamic that I really want to keep an eye on because I think it's going to cut back massively against the carry potential of some of these other champions. I'm happy to be here side. But yeah, you never want to feed the Echo 2 kills. I think that the value that the Echo got there, the potential to kill the Ornn in terms of like percentage of damage done probably goes up. Although now we're seeing a big roam. Izzo all the way up here. Pride Soccer and a caught up by the Encore. There's just no follow-up to be had, though. Yeah, all she has is two books. That's not a Seraphine that does damage yet. Tim nope. very deep now as well. This is going to be a numbers disadvantage for a bit as Pat has taken a while to roam down. Yeah, Pride Soccer and a really good play coming through from the back line off that twisted advance. Almost Bramble smashing Tim into oblivion, but the Jarvan the fourth manages to get out because this... Uh, this Maokai is going so low, although now Yoshi Miner rotating up alongside Mr. Ken is making this far more fraud. Ken, in fact, or Tim, in fact, does not manage to get out. And Yoshi Miner might also be sent back to the fountain. Great zoning W here from Mr. Ken. And actually, they want to continue to try to force the issue. Pata now caught up inside of the baby cage, but that's a huge beat drop hitting two members from Izzo. Mr. Ken trying to get out of dodge. They're able to take down Orn. Yoshi Miner also backing off, but now the Seraphine has a full health bar to play with and a lot of range to boot. Unfortunately, it's just not enough to reach onto the Vagar or Echo. Yeah, that's an unfortunate fight there. An unforced fight, really. Tim going in very deep, trying to find, I guess, some vision there, perhaps a steal, and just getting eaten to death. Really poor play. They are going to be able to force out Happy to be here and might be able to start this Herald as Vortex in trouble forced to cleanse. 
Yeah, that's a really good play by Robin. I like the fact that in the 1v1, Robin still is showing their chops. And actually, every game, they've been doing a good job CSing. That's something that's keeping them competitive, especially in this one where they suffered an early death. But Optimal Esports Infinity, they can't take these risky fights. Sure, Pata was fed. Now, it is the case that they are slightly less fed relative to the rest of Happy to be here. We got to focus in on Yoshi Miner Alls. 3-0-1 with Roa already completed on the Vagar. They may be small, but they're going to be getting big pretty soon yeah this is not a great look in the mid lane Izzo on the seraphine you don't expect the world it's a seraphine they're going to exist their job is to be a support come the mid and late game fine however that means you have to keep your laner from getting out ahead from being a problem here and right now yoshi miner is a major problem will only get worse currently sitting at 115 stacks already already has 184 ap it's just going to get bigger from here and if izzo dies this is going to get even worse and I think Izzo most certainly is going to die, Alls. That was a huge combo there. They're even going to try to blow their Encore to get something back, but they're unable to do so. They will just straight up fall, accelerating the development of Happy to Be Here as a whole. That Jin has a kill. The Echo also 3 0 oh, 2, mirroring the Vagar. But Yoshi Miner, they say, I don't want to be the same as my jungler. I want more. And so they're continuing to rain the poke down. Tim will be safe under that tower. But now look at Mr. Ken and pressuring in the their own right onto Blue Caboose, taking the magical journey alongside them. And Blue Caboose doesn't have the Q due to the classic turnaround stun combo. So now the Echo still has a chance to push forward even further. Will eventually have to use the rewind, get to safety across the far side of the wall. Does not even have flash up. They just use E to do it. Savannah and Yoshi Miner trying to poke. And while Optimal Esports Infinity have been shoved very far back in their own lane, they do manage to hold on and not give up a kill for at least right now. Robin, though, all alone near the tier one could be in trouble. Yeah, I think Robin's going to be fine, as it looks like Happy to Be Here is more focused on this Drake for the taking. The Chemtech Drake will put them on track for an Infernal Soul at 22 minutes, which would be huge. So that might be the next major focus here. Robin now finally getting poken out, but he's two whole levels above Savon. I think he's alright. Yeah. Yeah, also has the cleanse available here, so an Enchanted Crystal Arrow isn't necessarily going to spell death for the Zaya, but I'd rather not get hit by that. Uh, pushing that far forward, even up against an underleveled Savan, is dicey for sure. Luckily, they do get to safety. We'll be able to receive this wave, and OEI, they can look to the Zaya late game. I think that they will be able to scale quite nicely, probably outscale the Jin. in fact, as this champion has kind of been starved of a little bit of attention in gold by virtue of Savan roaming and Mr. Ken having bigger fish to fry, so... That's an angle for Red Squad, but when the angle comes from just not giving over kills rather than getting killed yourself, that's always a feels-bad moment. Yeah, and I don't know it's an angle so much as it's the angle. I mean, look at this squad. Who else is going to carry? Izzo on the Seraphine? I mean, sure, she builds a little nope. Andries. She does a little bit of damage, but not a carry. Tim? Perhaps. The J4 can be big, but not necessarily a solo carry of the game big. And the Orn's a tank. It's not going to be Pata. So you kind of have a team comp that's built around playing for Robin. They have to do a good job of making that happen. And so far, it's been a little bit lackluster. Savon firing off their Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Robin has to flash back outside of the way of that W, although now the Ash is getting engaged upon. They just go golden. We'll be able to get the safety off the back of their own summoner spell. Mista Ken rotating in. They can't quite find the pick. But Optimal Esports Infinity, they are denied that first tower, at least for now. Yeah, is still some good gold in Robin's pocket, but Mr. Ken looking to make a gold grab of his own, going in 1v3, but completely fearless. Yeah. Top on Echo, might as well go one off as how Izzo is going exceptionally low. Here it comes the curtain call. Blue Caboose and company trying to tank the Bard. Barely getting out of the way of the cage. Has to flash that one out and then takes the magical journey over the wall. But is forced away from that tier one tower. Mr. Ken goes on a rampage, eventually getting that that kill that they've been wishing for for so long. Yeah, now 4-0-2. Mr. Ken, after a rough game one, really has stepped up into his own here. It's great to see doing very well on this Echo as well as the Kane last game. At this point, does OEI just start trying to play around Pata? Is is that your win condition? Is the tank horn? 
I mean, it, it, Abyssal Mask to start things off is an interesting oh. call, not one that you see very frequently, but you might need to focus on that because what are you going to do versus Yoshi Biter? They're just deleting Tim. And you talked about, yeah, sure, maybe the Jarvan can get big, but alls, that is not happening this game. They're already more than 40 CS behind Mystican. They are never scaling. Yeah, they're 40 CS behind. The Vigar has 200 stacks. This game is in trouble. I asked you at the start of this game, might have been before we went live, whether you thought we would hit a fifth game. You said you'd have to see how OEI played. 15 minutes in, how are you feeling? I think this is a four-game series, baby. Happy to be here. I've come alive. And man, OEI, they are just not doing so hot, not only in terms of their laning phase, but also just in terms of how their draft now reflects how they've played this early game. Because you were saying, yeah, this is built around Robin, but Robin has never been the carry for Red Team. And that is so damningly clear here while they try to get the Zaya fed. And while they're still incapable of getting a kill onto that champion, you have a 4 0 and 3 Vagar, a 4 0 and 2 Echo. And yeah, maybe it's only a 3,000 gold lead for Happy to be here right now. But when you look at that in continuity with the fact that it's on such massively fed members almost solely, I think that this is just another one for Happy to be here to take home early and often. Absolutely. And you know, the gold lead doesn't reflect exactly what's going on. This is something you see with all of the scaling champs, but right now with 200 AP in pocket, the Vigar has effectively 2000 gold in his pocket. Just from stats, yep. which is, it doesn't reflect, but that's meaningful stats that OEI has to respect. And right now they're not doing a great job, but Pride Stalker may be a target here, running out of health, running out of time. Yeah, Call of the Forge God, unfortunately, not going to land as that is a very long stasis that Stopwatch puts you into. Unfortunately, the Maokai just has to sit there rooted up like a tree while everybody assembles around them. And that's going to be another kill going over to Optimal Esports. Off the back of the tree, man. Yet again, this is not a kill going over to the Zaya, though. Robin was there. If you wanted them to be the carry, you should have given it over. But instead, yeah, Pata grabs that one. They are going full MR build, which makes a lot of sense, but... Can they become unkillable enough for Yoshi Miner and Mr. Ken to actually do nothing? I don't think so. No, and I mean, look at the rest of the map. Yoshi Miner soloed another turret. Happy to be here is picking up another Drake. They're five minutes away from Soul. The Herald's going to be popped here. They're going to lock down Pride Stalker. But I don't know that they necessarily Pata. win this fight. Pot is a tower dead. shot. Oh, that Bramble Smash was beautiful, keeping them inside of the tower aggro range. Luka Boost is desperately trying to get over the wall. Tim follows them in the magical journey, but Pride Soccer and A, they are taking their own right with the Radiant Virgin completed. And that's a great snap from Vortex Ninja to make sure the Jarvan can't get out alive. Neither can Luka Boost. A double kill, in fact, for Vortex Knight. Happy to be here. They're starting to spread around the gold. They say, hey, if Pata wants to build full a, a, a full AP resist, let them. We're going to get our AD carry also very ahead. Yeah, at this point, there's just no winning for OEI. Every fight is going in the favor of Blue Squad here. And with Baron spawning in two minutes, I feel like that's the next easy target for Happy to be here. They're just going to do what OEI did in game one. Take chunks out of the armor here, piece by piece, dismantle oe infinity and unless they can stabilize unless they can start finding picks get some of this shutdown gold into robin's pocket i don't see them having a chance here oh robin is gonna try to duel with vortex ninja Izzo and tim are on a great flank encore going to land onto the gym immediately is cleansed out but tim gonna flag and drag in get that kill the shutdown in fact Going over to Red Squad. Now, Optimal Esports Infinity, they have to try to get out. Here's the Nature's Grasp and Mysticen entering into the pit for a duel to the death. Eventually, the burst means that the Echo just has to skedaddle, and that's actually favorable for Red Team. Yeah, is a small win here. They have to continue getting something out of it as the stun comes back out. They're not uh -oh. done with this fight. Yeah, this is no longer favorable for them. Yoshi Biter with a beautiful cage getting two off the back of their ultimate. They get a triple kill. Tim trying to zone for Pata, but that just means a quadra goes over to the mid laner of happy to be here. And they steamroll ahead in this match. Yeah, um, Yoshi Miner just kind of existed. Yoshi Miner yeah. still only has one item. That Rod of Ages is not fully complete. And yet, the man is sitting on nearly 600 AP. 
This is ridiculous. This is insane. And he might get the pentakill here. Pato just walking forward. Yeah, it gets rooted up. Yoshi Miner, they will be denied the penta because of the delay, but it's a pentakill on our hearts all. I feel like we just casted one of these for Chaotic. Yeah, we sure did, where you called the Penta three separate times, and three separate times it was denied for the same player in the same game. You just cursed. <laughs> Look, I knew one of them was a Quadra. I, instead of saying it was a Penta, I just called the mid laner that stole the kill from the AD carry a bastard. So, you know, make that what you will. <laughs> All, all jokes aside here, with now 9 kills in Yoshi Miner's pocket, with the Rabadons picked up, Yoshi Miner now sitting at nearly 900 AP at 20 and a half minutes. Uh, Nyarko, I feel comfortable saying that this game is over. Yeah, certainly. I don't care how much re magic resist you stack. Pata is unfortunately just one target. And yeah, you'll take a little bit of abuse. But the problem is OEI has been struggling a lot with her positioning. So it's not even like the Orn is your major issue. You can just kind of ignore them during team fights, burst everybody else down at first. And then exactly what we saw there, Pata gets out for a little bit, but still can't hold these towers once the rest of the team has been wiped. Happy to be here in such a comfortable position. This is more dominant than I think we saw in game number one at this point in time, all. And so, yeah, Baron Nash are going to be on the horizon as well as a 2-1 lead in the series for a blue team. Yeah, absolutely. Doing a great job of splitting the map, forcing focus to be dragged all over by OEI as Saivon walks forward, gets some good vision. Might actually look for Pata here. Nope, just clearing out the Scuttle Crab, getting some poke down. This is... This is almost hard to watch. The gold lead, not as large as it was in game one for OEI at this point in time, but it feels like the pressure is just so much heavier. It feels so much more oppressive to be OEI in this game than it was happy to be here in game one. Yeah, the problem is that Optimal Esports Infinity just don't have a comp that is super responsive to the Vagar or the Echo. A lot of squishy members, a lot of vulnerable people could easily be bursted down. Blue Caboose on the Bard just hasn't really impacted the map a ton. And the problem is with the Bard, you you are building tank. It's kind of the only thing that like Bards really build right now, unless you know you're like AD Bard or something. And the problem is, you, you're, there's no way you're ever going to be able to tank any amount to answer back against this Vagar and company. That being said, Savant is getting picked off quite early, and now Mr. Ken caught in the mosh pit. They're just going to be shut down by Pata before they can even activate their ultimate. And now one by one, happy to be her, trying to like, funnel into the river. Yoshi Miner baby cages. That's going to prevent Pride Soccer NA from getting run down at least for now. But Pata trying to come forward with their head but here is the twisted advance but unfortunately pride soccer blew it too early now tim can just hit them with their ultimate yoshi miner is able to get one back but what a favorable play for optimal esports infinity from so far behind pata now his mr going to be put to the test can they resist yoshi miner they're able to headbutt away even in the front of the baby cage and yeah they get to safety what a turnaround a few more of those and this could be everything that red squad needs yeah, that was an alright fight. I think what changed that fight over there is the fact that Yoshi Miner took way too long to teleport in. Waited until three members were already dead or on their last legs before even starting to channel. That's just way too late when Izzo was already there at the start of the fight. Yoshi Miner has so much of this gold, so much value on him, he needs to be there for those fights. Can't hold the TP like that. And this is a very awkward call, though, from OEI. I thought that they were just going to rush towards that dragon, try to stop the soul take, but no, happy to be here. They lose so many members, yet still, because the Vagar is so fed, they have to respect the mid laner. And so Yoshi Miner, at the end of this, still makes this a very valuable few minutes for happy to be here. They get Infernal Soul, and now Mr. Ken and company are just going to be even more dangerous. So, I mean, I spoke too soon, unfortunately, y'all. This is still an uphill battle for sure for Red Team. Yeah, but at least they got something. They can continue to find fights where Yoshi Miner isn't there, and they might just be able to claw it back. You've seen these games in your solo queues where you try in 1v9, but the rest of your team is just too desperate to lose. That's what OEI needs here. My worry is that Robin just didn't get anything off that play, though. And now we're seeing a big catch out. I think Happy to Be Here are going to rally right back. Izzo already low, trying to kite this out with a double beat drop. They will be able to root down Pride Stalker, but they still will fall this time to Savan. And yeah, that's already one gone. Optimal Esports and Infinity have to beat a hasty retreat back towards their Tier 3 tower mid. And nothing to be seen here for them. Happy to Be Here can just walk over to the Baron Nasher. 
Yeah, it looks like exactly where they're going. This may be a bait trying to find Tim here, though, as Mysticen sitting in that bush wants this. All oh, right, Blue Caboose is the one caught out first, though. Tim able to get away with the flag and drag the bar. Not so lucky. No Tempered Fate available. They are just going to die and happy to be here. Now have two dead on the map for Optimal Esports Infinity. They know that they can start the Big Purple Warm off of this one. But yet again, Tim baited forward, tries to Cataclysm out. Pride Soccer NA is isolated. Ace, or not Ace in the hole, excuse me, but instead Curtain Call is activated. But unfortunately, the angle is wrong. Tim does get out. Tim gets out, but look at all the time he bought. Now, happy to be here, can't take the Baron. Now they have to respond to Pata and Robin, who pushed through mid lane and were able to pick up a tier 2 turret. This isn't nothing, this is small chunks of gold for OEI. Even when they're losing the fights, it's at least something they're trying to keep their hopes alive here. Yeah, that's some exceptionally scrappy play coming out of Optimal Esports Infinity. Definitely respectable. And in fact, because they're able to extract both the Zaya and the Orn, that I think is like overall a value positive play for them, especially when you view it in continuity with that first fight that they took. Once again, though, the problem is you look at the people on the map who you want to have gold. None of them have it. All There's still a zero in two uh, Zaya in this game. Tim is basically, is actually Flame Horizon by Mr. Ken. I don't care how many kills the Jarvan has, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, no, Jarvan is, I mean, he's still a factor in this game. The Cataclysm is big if Izzo and Pada can get locked down over the top of it. The problem is that right now, with the Kraken Slayer Navori, I don't think that Robin has the damage to cut through what Happy to Be Here has right now out of the people that Tim can actually get onto without dying. Yeah, maybe Pata having crested over to an upgraded Jack show will be able to start buffing Robin to the point where they can make back a little bit of the ground that they lost by lacking kills versus Vortex Ninja. But it's certainly going to be a difficult call. Here comes the Tempered Fate. It looks like they're going for a pick down onto Pride Soccer NA, but Teleport being channeled here from Yoshi Miner means that now Red Squad, they have to back off, especially with this Curtain Call providing suppressive fire. Blue Caboose taking up most of it, and they will be able to get their players away from the fight. But once again, Optimal Esports Infinity to use a lot of resources, and now they might not actually be able to escape as a whole. Blue Caboose is unfortunately killed inside of their Magical Journey Portal. Pata will take absolutely no damage because they are tanky as all get out. Don't get me wrong, alls, but now you have to stand here and wait for an all-out fight in a man-down situation as Optimal Esports. Yeah, Mysticen on the edge looking for an angle as Yoshi Miner. Look at that damage. Robin nearly died there. That's incredible. Yeah, it's just such an unfortunate situation. I'm glad that Robin got one of the first upgraded mythic items in the game. Um, now, Pot is in a lot of trouble, though, just having to try to hold this tier 3 tower all by their lonesome. They're taking about half health. And yeah, I don't care how much MR you got. Eventually, you're going to be whittled down because of all of the range advantage that Happy to Be Here has when the rest of your team is so far pushed back or just killed. Yeah, and look at that again. Happy to be here splitting the map, forcing the entirety of OEI to respond mid lane as Ken wanders off, takes a turret topside, continuing to push the map smaller and smaller for OEI. They can barely get out of their base now unless they're catching reset timers from Happy to be here. It's just so hard for them to get vision. This Baron, if OEI loses a single fight, the Baron is gone, the mid wave gets pushed, and they just end the game. They have to play perfectly from here on out, and... We haven't seen perfect so far. Not at all. And look at the damage being put down onto Izzo from so far away. Many football fields finally closed up by Pride Soccer and Vortex Ninja. They aren't able to quite kill the Seraphine off of that one. But, I mean, 04 and 5, the Seraphine is virtually dead anyway. Yeah, virtually dead. And if Vigar was there, would be very dead. Yoshi Miner at 400 stacks. Can and now he's now? here. Get, get some more stacks, why don't you? Um, Blue Caboose on the Bard, I feel like we haven't criticized it enough. It's been completely useless this game. It's like Blue Caboose, Cabuseless. Sorry, I'm trying. Uh, that, was, that was a stretch. Yeah, that was a bad one. Uh, that yeah. being said, you're right. It, it hasn't been effective. I would have liked to see just about anything else. I feel like the Nautilus would have worked fine. I could have seen a Leona even coming out here. More of the circular CC to stack in the center of team fights. Yep. We are going to see the Elder taken here. I feel like this has to herald the end of the game, even if OEI tries for a very delayed Baron trade. 
Yeah, I mean, there's not any way for this Baron to be used offensively. The only hope that Red Squad has is that they can maybe get some kind of like sneaky pick as they aren't even starting off the big purple warm. They're just looking to push out waves. But now where the hell is Tim going, man? Uh, he's trying for anything. I think it looks like that since Happy to be here decided they weren't going to focus him, he's going to get out just fine. But definitely some greed that was very likely to take that off. And yeah, here comes the Baron. Mm. Yoshi Miner can just about solo it at this point. He has 1200 AP. Yeah, and I mean, happy to be here. I think they found their groove. They found the draft that works for them as well. This is a game where their worst tendencies come out and are laid to bear, but it just doesn't matter. Sure, Pride Soccer NA is like kind of chain inting top versus an Orn of all things, <laughs> and it just doesn't matter. They're on a Maokai this time. That's perfect for them. They're able to press R and still impact team fights no matter how far behind they are, and they aren't even that far behind. They're doing a great job facilitating plays. Happy to be here. They're just able to play off of Yoshi Biner now and look what that's leading to huge area coverage off the gin as well makes it so much easier for the Vagar to approach and this is beautiful the double buff laying siege to the mid lane this is gonna be a tier three tower going down soon the inhibitor is shortly to follow and all of optimal esports infinity can also die here if they are not careful yeah i mean if they walk within flash ult range of yoshi miner they're dead end of story mm-hmm so this is this is very difficult for OEI to defend. This is a 4v5, by the way. Mr. Ken has wandered off to the bot lane because he is allergic to staying with his team, apparently. I mean, Mr. Ken on the Echo is wanting to play for these kind of like weird angles anyway. So this is not a terrible call on their front, especially Zoshi Miner with these blind cages or not fully blind cages. They have vision, but these cages over the wall, they're still getting like poked down, right? Um. If anything, I think that Mr. Ken made the right call because now they're just going to focus on this other tower. Robin immediately has to cleanse. Still just get bursted from long range by Vortex Ninja. And that's already Cataclysm used by Tim. I don't think that OEI can hold on anymore. This is going to be a game three going over to Happy to be here and alls. They now find themselves on the cusp of surviving through this bottom side of the gauntlet and optimal esports infinity. They got to find a new angle into this one. Yeah, this is not how we expected the series to go after game one. It looked like it was OEI to 3-0. And instead, complete comeback and suddenly happy to be here looks like a completely different team. They look incredible. And like I said, happy to be here. It didn't it wasn't even like they had a massive turnaround. And I'm like, are these new players playing on these accounts? Right. This is really an impressive showing of them understanding their weaknesses, playing towards their strengths. And now Mr. Ken Yoshi Miner, the focus of the team, the apple of their eye. I mean, they did such a good job uh, just making sure that the momentum for happy to be here continue to mount Yoshi Miner in particular on that Vagar basically could 1v5, and they had all the facilitation from Pride Stalker, from Vortex Ninja and company to ensure that that game went very cleanly in their favor. Now, we we'll move to the Rift for a fourth time here in just a little bit alls, and I don't see how Optimal Esports Infinity is going to be able to rally back. No, unless they can pull out something incredible to force a game five here, it really does feel like it's happy to be here's game to lose, and they are looking good, my friend. It's tough for OEI because they looked so good in game one. That was the kind of team that we wanted to see from them all season, that we wanted to see this team has some great players on it. And then they just stopped. They stopped firing on all cylinders. They stopped playing their game. And now happy to be here with the momentum, with the pressure, doing everything they need to do. I, I don't see a way that this doesn't end this game. All right. Well, guys, we are going to throw it to a quick break to get into this crew, and I'm interested to see what the adjustments are going to be. Happy to be here. They're going to be relegated back to red side. They have one from there once, but it has always looked a little bit more shaky. Can they make lightning strike for a third time and finally bring themselves to victory? Or are we going to a game five? We'll see you guys soon.